Question three. Iron can form a variety of complexes with different ligands and each complex has different properties. Some iron complex ions are paramagnetic. Paramagnetic substances are substances that are weakly attracted by a magnetic field. So not something we've actually talked about, they're just giving you statements or information. Paramagnetism is caused by the presence of unpaired electrons. So we're expecting that's going to be important. In both of these compounds here, uh, the Fe2 plus has 60 electrons, but only the one with water basically is paramagnetic. Complete the D orbital box diagram for the complex iron Fe Cn6 4 minus. Okay, so in this case, what we're looking at, sorry, I'm just turning over my notes. Um, so what we're looking at here is, as I say, six D electrons. It tells you that it's got six D electrons. Um, so what we have is, here's your degenerate orbitals, parallel, then pair. That's your Aufbau and Hund being used for what's happened inside here. Okay. Uh, the relative ability of a ligand to split the D orbitals is given by spectrochemical series. Now you actually need to know this, so it's nice that they've put it in. Spectrochemical series is shown below. We've got our cyano group and amino, and then we've got our water. This one, the one with water, has unpaired electrons and is therefore paramagnetic. Explain how unpaired electrons can arise. Okay, so what we know is that this one is splitting the d orbitals less than this one and definitely less than this one. So what we're saying is that this gap up here is smaller. Now, if you have a smaller gap, it's going to be easier to jump the electrons up. So if I can take these ones, oh, sorry, make sure they're, and they're not parallel. Dodgy diagram here, sorry. Okay, so these ones inside the water splitting have got a smaller gap to jump up to this one here. So if I promote an electron up here, I now have an unpaired and an unpaired. And that means that this could then be paramagnetic. But if we're looking at the CN gap, if the gap is so much bigger, it's harder to shift the electrons up. So you're not going to get the, the unpairedness that you need. Okay. Explain why all the complex ions formed by the Fe3 plus are paramagnetic. Okay. Fe3 plus, if we kind of do our sums on this, well, actually, let's bring in the original. Okay, so this is our original orbital box for an iron atom. Okay, um, sorry, just bringing in a different colour so we can see it. Okay, so our 4S fills first, and then we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, this is, so this is an iron, no ions on this yet. Okay, right now we're going to take it to 3+. plus. Take out our 4Ss. And one of the 3Ds would give us a 3D orbital with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the same system because we have a half-filled subshell. They are unpaired, and so therefore that all has to be part of the splitting. Okay, So all of them are going to be paramagnetic. Okay. Right. Human blood is red due to the presence of hemoglobin, and then we've got pictures of all of a whole pile of other ones: hemoglobin, oxyhemocyanin, and chlorocruorin. Maybe, might be how you pronounce it. Probably not. Okay, state the coordinate number of the Fe2 plus. Okay, here's our Fe2 plus inside hemoglobin. It is attached to one, two, three, four things. That's it. Spider's blood contains the oxyhemocyanin complex ion. It contains copper, suggests an analytical technique that would be used to determine the presence of copper. Right, if I'm looking specifically for copper, I, the first place you should be thinking is you're looking for oh, sorry, um, either emission or absorption. You know that each, everything, not even each, just every single um, atom will have, in an element, will have a particular absorption and emission spectra for that particular one. So if I'm looking for copper, what I want to do is put it through an emission spectroscopy and then say, right, okay, is it giving the lines that I expect from copper? That would tell you straight out, okay? Um, use your knowledge of chemistry, comment on why these animals have different colored blood. Okay, this is what I've pulled for this one. You're gonna, it's maybe not the worst of your uh, three markers. Okay, if we're talking about different colors of blood, um, it says here, 
colors of many transition metals can be explained in terms of D to D transition. So you're going to have to talk about D to D transitions. And that would be talking about the ability to split the D orbitals. Um, and then you can talk about a large difference and um, a small difference. Now, all of that is actually being talked about above. So you don't want to go into it in vast amounts of detail, but you just want to make sure that you've made it clear that you understand what you were talking about before. Okay, and then you've got the light is absorbed when it's promoted to a higher energy level or high, sorry, high, higher d orbital. And then if one light of colour is absorbed, then the complementary would be observed. And then pulled the colour wheel because this is what you then want to talk about. If I absorb in the red, I'm going to see in the blue green. Okay. Um, and then we've got higher energy levels. So this is when you wouldn't see a colour, is the last one, if it's in the ultraviolet out with. Okay, um, so different colours you should be able to talk about reasonably in this way. Okay, um, you can talk about specifically um, the ligands that are attached to here. You can talk about different changes in, in the field strength. Um, it is a little bit of all of this conversation just being put into the context of these, these blood colours. Okay, this is a straight left out of the content and obviously the colour wheels out your data book. Okay, that's a question.